last night on Tuesday, the 28th of May, 2024, the President of South Africa, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa, signed the Cannabis for Private Purpose Bill into law. This was on the eve of our general election, which is happening today throughout South Africa. It's a landmark election. It's 30 years that we've had democracy uh, in our country. And we never thought the president was going to sign this bill before the election. And we'd just like to thank those people, you know who you are, who are working with the ear of the president to make sure that this bill didn't just lie on somebody's desk after the election, only to be eaten by termites. So it was with great relief that I heard the news at about 10 to 9 last night. I think the president must have signed the bill somewhere around 8 p.m. Um, and it came as such a relief. Uh, everybody who's in the cannabis communities in South Africa knows that there's been much divisive action when it comes to signing this bill. And there's so many things that one can speak about. I mean, the bill is a lengthy document. Just excuse my dogs. <laughs> the bill is a lengthy document. And um, I can't hear now off the cuff just go through every single one of them, but there certainly are things that are whizzing around all of the groups on social media. Uh, there are things that are being discussed here, there and everywhere. And I think that the most important thing to remember now this morning as we let the news sink in is please make sure that you've got the correct version of the bill. We will publish a blog today on our Fields of Green for All website, publishing the correct version of the bill. You should download it, print it out, go through it with a fine tooth comb so that you know you're not misquoting things. Because over the last five, nearly six years since the Constitutional Court judgment granting us the right to use, possess and cultivate cannabis within private spaces in South Africa. There's been numerous iterations of this bill um, with, with highly varying content. So I just implore everybody um, in South Africa and around the world to please make sure that you've got the correct version. I think at the top of my list of things to say today about the signing of this bill has to be that this is the first act of parliament in South Africa to legalize the private adult use of cannabis in our land. Okay? There hasn't been any other cannabis laws passed. And this is also the first act of parliament in Africa for the adult use of cannabis. Now, this is really significant because South Africa has a responsibility to, to show the way. We know that Lesotho were before us when it came to medicinal cannabis. And we know by now that it is a great advantage to pass laws with regards to adult use before we pass laws uh, with regard to medicinal use because we can't have two sets of laws one for those who are sick and one for the, or those who are healthy so let's look at the the bigger picture around the signing of the bill and how south africa can position ourselves to be continent leaders in this in this aspect so now that the bill is out of the drugs and drug trafficking act of 1991 should we say hypothetically that the police come and they decide to charge you with hypothetically having too many plants. You can no longer be charged in a court of law with being a drug dealer. I'm not saying that cannabis is not a drug. I am saying that taking it out of the Drugs and Drug Trafficking Act takes cannabis out from under the umbrella of all of the other substances within that Drugs Act. And that is super, super important for us because it means that cannabis for private use has been descheduled. We can't say now that a cannabis plant can be regulated underneath the Medicines Act. Yes, cannabis medicine that makes a claim and says this cannabis medicine is going to help your backache. Yes, that needs to be regulated by SARPRA because it's a medicine <clears throat> making a claim. Um, but our humble cannabis plant 
as a medicine can no longer be regulated uh, by SAPRA and that is really important in terms of descheduling from the Medicines Act. Now something that people on the groups all over social media have been particularly worried about is the penalties and yes we do see the bill as being particularly over restrictive when it comes to threatening us with 10 years in jail well i'd just like to remind everybody that um nearly 15 years ago now uh, jules and i were facing seven to ten years in jail for dealing in dacha which was a undesired dependence producing substance which it no longer is in terms of the law just imagine the scenario of the people who are writing this bill they don't necessarily know all of the intricacies and the workings of this sunrise sector in south africa and there's never been a law signed in by the president ever that has not been amended by the regulations. So we all know is we don't have any regulations yet. What I know for sure, as me personally, is that I don't have a crystal ball. People out there are saying, yes, and they're going to lock us up for 10 years. Well, you know, blah, blah, blah. My problem with this is is that i don't have a crystal ball i know that there are moves afoot in south africa to write the regulations this process has already begun and that is all that i can say on this public platform but the regulations are going to happen and the regulations can't happen without public consultation so yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to go through that terrible, painful process when they, public the, when they publish the regulations of submitting our comments and maybe being on those lengthy uh, Zoom calls with the Justice Portfolio Committee or whoever the committee is who's going to be in charge of, of regulations. We still have to do this. We've still got a ways to go. I think in some ways, writing the law is much easier than writing the regulations and this is going to be something that's going to have to be very very carefully considered going forward but don't jump to conclusions that they're going to be able to lock you up for 10 years without proving harm because we know that the evidence hasn't be been heard but we also know that just a few months ago we thought that the government still think we smoke the leaves but in this very bill that has just been signed into law, it specifies that this law only applies to the fruiting and flowering tops of the cannabis plant, not the other parts of the cannabis plant. It's the fruiting and flowering tops. And we must go back to the evidence again, because the evidence hasn't been heard, and we know that there's evidence across all four platforms of use of this cannabis plant. And we know that certain IKS and Rastafari communities are very, very concerned. But if you go and read the bill, remember to download the correct version from our website, um, you will see that there's a large section given to IKS and given to our traditional cultural and religious use of this plant. Plus, the Fields of Green for All Cannabis Embassy team have just been in Geneva for a grueling two weeks discussing cannabis and our genetic resources and traditional knowledge as it applies to the new treaty that's just been signed last Friday in Geneva, to which South Africa as a country has signed on to that treaty, uh, which has to do with intellectual property. And we also know that in the government steering committee that was uh, appointed following the Pakisa last year, there is 100% representation from the IKS indigenous and uh, uh, Rastafari groups. So don't think that the IKS and the Rastafari are not represented in this process going forward. So I would really like to just dispel all the information and just revel a little bit in what an important step this is for South Africa as being the first adult cannabis use law in Africa. It's groundbreaking, it really is. So 
if we consider all of our cannabis uh, uh, communities here in South Africa, one can't sign off without speaking about Dacha Private Clubs, because Dacha Private Clubs has, this concept has been around in South Africa since 2015. And one must also remember that the, the concept of the Dacha Private Club is the model. It's a model, the Dacha Private Club. The way you run your business is not the model. The way you run your business is your business. And Fields of Green for All is here to advise you on the legality of, of Dacha Private Clubs going forward. This is still a really big uh, grey area and something which we need to discuss amongst ourselves in, in, in great detail. But as far as the bill stands, if your Dacha Private Club is private, then you at least have gone uh, a few steps along along the road to ensuring that you are minimizing the harm of the cops coming and either soliciting a bribe or closing down your, your operation. So we have lots and lots of conversations to have between us about uh, Dacher Private Clubs. But as I see it now, the Dacher Private Club model, because this is a private purposes bill, is the one way that we can build a bridge between us and the government, between us and the powers that be that are writing the regulations. I can't think of any other way uh, to build this bridge. And you know, this is not a new bridge. We must think of stockfells and burial societies and golf clubs and associations of this and associations of that where people get together and they work collectively for, for the greater good. This is not, we don't have to reinvent the wheel here. And I think that it's going to take some very careful lobbying of the government for them to understand the concept of the Dacha Private Club and how it can also apply to the most grassroots of our communities here in South Africa. We know that we've got some of our uh, um, affiliate associations and uh, companies working towards the greater good when it comes to DACA private clubs and we really salute people. We really salute the people who are working to connect the rural Ponder, Ponder land growers with, with the clubs in the, in the urban areas. This is a mammoth task. Um, and as I've already said, there's still lots and lots of work to do. And as I sit here, I cannot gaze into my crystal ball and say that this is what the government are going to do or this is what they're going to come up with. Or you're going to be locked up in a cage for 10 years. I very much doubt it. I think that's the worst possible case scenario. And if we center our efforts around human rights, harm reduction, and drug policy reform, and we take that bigger picture and we hone it down into concrete actions, like strategic litigation, like community involvement in the DACA Private Clubs project, like moving forward in a positive way instead of just bashing on and whining on on social media when it's quite clear that a lot of the people who are still causing conflict haven't really got the right end of the stick. So I'm sure that I haven't covered everything. There are issues like the expungement of criminal records. There are, there's still the issue of the Labour Court and whether Barlow World are going to appeal Bernie Enova's judgment. That's so super important because people are still being fired from work every day. It's the, it's the idea of stopping the cops. You know, Fields of Green, I've been promising for the last 15 years, I will not give up until I can stop the cops. If we're talking about plant counting, what is, a, what is a reasonable amount of plants to have? We haven't had this conversation with the powers that be. And more importantly, who is going to come and count our plants? Are the cops going to carry on wasting their time by rocking up at our gates to come and count our plants? Or are we going to have some sort of body in place that is recognized by our government departments and uh, given the mandate? To, to enforce our new cannabis bill. Because remember, cannabis has been taken out of the Drugs and Drug Trafficking Act and everything cannabis now goes under the Cannabis for Private Purposes bill. Once the regulations are written, the bill will be amended. There has been no law ever passed in South Africa that hasn't been amended by regulations. That's how it works. 
the bill is the blueprint it's the zero draft of our cannabis uh, sunrise sector and on this beautiful on this beautiful autumn day as the aeroplanes fly overhead um, and the dogs bark and the sun is shining and South Africans are all going to the polls let us rest assured that we've taken a really really big step on this difficult road to freedom for our favorite plant and I just want to give a shout out to my Fields of Green for All team, other activists and spokesmen, spokespeople of organizations and companies and interested parties and stakeholders all over South Africa who have given us such tremendous support over the last few months as we have been um, somewhat worn down by the opposition to this bill. But today we stand and we hold our heads high and we look forward to the future, which certainly should include fields of green for all.